Winston not quite as fast as he was, but still picking his punches much more cleanly than the champion. Three beautiful left hands, flush in the face. And Spinks is bleeding from the nose. And Spinks in trouble on the ropes there. At the end of round 10, Spinks, a very tired champion, goes into his corner there and is in great trouble. As he takes his seat there, he's bleeding from the nose and his left eye is closing up. And Terry Spinks at the end of round 10 looks a very battered, bruised and almost beaten champion. And the referee, Ike Carl, is called over to the corner. And indeed, Winston has won. Unbeaten as a professional, maintains his unbeaten record and wins the featherweight championship of Great Britain. What do you think won the fight for you chiefly? Good corner work and I think uh, speed. And that left hand? And the left hand, yes. Did he hurt you at all? No, not once. Winston continued unhurt and unbeaten for nine more fights. He successfully defended his British title twice. But in a non-title fight at the Town Hall in Leeds in November 1962, he was knocked down three times by Leroy Jeffrey, and that unbeaten record was gone. And then he hit me again, and I fell down right in the corner, and Eddie grabbed hold of my leg, you know. And I remember, you know, like in the pictures, I remember looking up to the ropes, and uh, he said to me, stay down, and he grabbed my foot, and I kicked him away, you know, and I got back up. And this fella let into me again, and the referee stopped the fight, which is fair enough. You know, I was in no condition to defend myself. Well, what a shock to the system, and uh, uh, that's a time when a true champion really comes through and pulls him, you know, dusts himself down and, uh, and gets back out there. And I'm sure that um, Eddie Thomas would have been uh, uh, none too happy at that because uh, he was a, he's a breeder of champions and no, not runners up. It's said that the great Sugar Ray Robinson was in the in the crowd that night and went backstage to see Howard afterwards and said, well, maybe that was the best thing that could have happened to you. It's, it's never the best thing that can happen. Defeat is never the, uh, the best thing that can happen to a fighter, I can assure you, because uh, I've experienced it and it's not very nice. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a builder of character and um, possibly the timing was right. So, uh, and, and, and it proves so in, in, in future fights. Winston picked himself up. He became European champion in July 1963. He would never lose to a British or European boxer. It's all over. It's all over. And now we wait for Signor Marginelli to declare the result. And we wait for the announcement. And it's Winston the winner. Winston has successfully defended the European featherweight championship. That's Winston's 52nd fight and his 50th win, a half century of wins. And so Winston now will be hoping to go on to a world title fight with Saldivar of Mexico. And then everybody is sort of uh, willing the world championship to happen. I mean, I, I remember it. I was, I was young, but I remember the Howard Winston sort of build-up. And it was, it caught the public imagination. I, I suppose, you know, with Cal Zaghi, we get, we get a touch of boxing fever, but uh, do you think it compares with what we had then 40 years ago? I don't think anything can compare with the, the likes of um, Howard's uh, fights because they were, they were special. He had something different. Howard had class. Uh, he had panache. He had everything that was needed of a, of a, of a great fighter. And, uh, and as I say, whatever he lacked, in, in punching power, he most certainly made up for it in, uh, in ability. Earls Court, London, September 1965. Vicente Saldivar of Mexico, the world champion, against Howard Winston, backed by 12,000 Welsh voices. He had to come head to head with uh, Vicente Saldivar of Mexico. How good was he? Yes, well, it was the perfect fight. It was the, uh, the extreme fighting machine. Uh, boxing, the, the ultimate box, uh, boxing machine, and, uh, and it, it uh, once again had uh, the makings of a, a tremendous uh, world title fight. Fifteen rounds. Um, 
which was the norm then. It, how much more grueling was that to go 15 rather than the 12 we tend to have now? Well, I'm going to say the preparation for these 15-round uh, title fights were, were extreme. They were punishing. Uh, unlike today, it's all speed work. People are working on speed because the duration is just three, 12, three-minute rounds. And, and in those days, it was a lot of road, road work, a lot of grind, a lot of, lot of rounds in the, in, in the gym, which they don't do today. Uh, extreme amount of rounds, really, possibly a little bit too much. But at the end of the day, um, all Thomas's fighters were prepared. And, and, and I can assure you, Thomas's fighters would have been finishing the 15-round fights the strongest. That stamina would be sorely tested in the Winston Saldivar series of fights. Epic, cruel, brilliant, exhausting. There's half a minute left. And a tremendous show of strength by the Mexican as we reach the closing seconds. There it is. And it's over. championship is over and it's Saldivar still the champion. Vicente Saldivar of Mexico is still champion of the world and the Welsh challenge has failed but it's failed so very very gallantly. Howard you know that uh, there are quite a few people around that ringside who thought you won this fight. Uh, would you agree with that yourself? Well Eddie said it was close. He may just have got pipped you know and that's it. Did you get all the hinge from about the 12th onwards? I think so yeah. Well Eddie said you know he came in strong cuffing and pushing. 13th and 14th, I came back the 15th. How does he compare with other men you've met? Is he far and away the toughest man you've ever met? Well, one of the strongest. He wants you the best puncher, though, you know. He's pushing and cuffing me a lot. Like he didn't have quite the class that uh, I think we expected to see from him. I mean, a strong man, but not much else. No class, no. It meant a rematch, and this time in Wales, in, uh, in Cardiff. Does that count as home for a Merthyr boy? I, 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 I can't see that as, as home for a, for, a, for, a, for a valley boy, as I would call Howard, a Merthyr boy. Um, calling the, the capital, then Cardiff. I'm sure Eddie wouldn't have been thinking on those lines because uh, uh, as far as Eddie was concerned, uh, uh, Merthyr was home ground, Merthyr was the capital, and uh, Howard was, uh, was boxing in Cardiff. And what a wonderful welcome Howard Winston gets from his own people at Ninian Park, Cardiff, this great night for Welsh boxing, an estimated 20 to 25,000 people here to cheer Winston. 20,000 at Ninian Park must have been a hell of an occasion. Yes, when you think of it, um, probably uh, Howard wouldn't have boxed in front of a, of a, a, a home crowd as, 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 as big as that, as vast as that. And you can imagine the atmosphere uh, being electric. And um, uh, yes, well, I don't know, sometimes it works in reverse. Sometimes there's a lot more added pressure when you're in front of your, of your home field. Two minutes have gone in this World Championship fight, and so far the Mexican hasn't landed a really good contact. And to take a few it went 15 rounds first time, it went 15 rounds second time. This time there, there, there was controversy. Yes, and I mean to say, uh, I think if you speak to or what I've read of people leaving the arena, 90% 90, 90 of them thought that Howard had won it. And there's the bell, a wonderful world championship fight, and Saldivar is the winner, and Saldivar has retained his world championship on points over 15 rounds. Well, we, thought, we all thought we'd won it, like, you know, that's where it goes. You felt yourself you'd won it? Oh, yeah. I didn't have early on, I think, to win it easy. And because of the result and the controversy of the second meeting with Saldivar, a third bout was arranged. But this time it was, I don't know, Mexico City, it's, it's all that altitude, it's travel, it's, uh, it, we're talking a different, a different game altogether here, aren't we? When you actually go away to fight for a world title, I think that, that uh, an element of the pressure is, is actually lifted. And sometimes it puts you in a comfort zone. Well, Mexico is the wrong place to go in, when, you, when you, you're feeling as if you're in a comfort zone. It was stopped in the 12th. Eddie Thomas threw the towel in. Um, that must be difficult for, for all concerned, because uh, Howard doesn't want Eddie to throw the towel in. And uh, what's, what, what is it like then? Let's not make no bones about it. Howard Winston was a man of great pride, you know, and, uh, and for him to go anywhere in the world, 
uh, unboxer uh, for, a, 